best credit cards for beginners. That's what we're getting into today. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Austin. I'm a co-owner of cloudmusicsuite.com. On this channel, we talk everything money and personal development. So if that sounds up your alley, go ahead and subscribe. Let's get into this thing. So you want to start your credit journey and you want to do that with credit cards, right? Probably the easiest way to build up your credit score over time. So we're going to talk about three different tiers of cards. Tier number one, there's going to be three options in here. First credit card ever. So if it was me, I was watching this video, I'd choose from one of these three cards. Second tier is going to be the second credit card you should get. There's going to be three options I give you in there. And then third tier is uh, the third credit card you should get. Yes, I think you should have at least three cards, if not more, maybe. And here's why. Your FICO score, which is like your credit score, one of the biggest scoring models, I'll put it up on the screen, is broken down into these five categories. And basically, if you don't max out your credit cards, meaning you have $1,000 you could spend, but you don't spend all the $1,000, you only spend like 100 or 200, you don't let it go maxed out all the way to 1,000, you pay your bill on time every single month in full, you have a decent amount of credit accounts open, you have decently long credit accounts open, five years, seven years, 10 years, 15 years, and you don't have a lot of new credit, your credit score is gonna be super, super high, and you're gonna get whatever card you want and the best rate on any loan. So that's what we wanna do here. If your credit score is really low right now, you got to start somewhere. So this first tier is for a lower credit score, first card ever that you've ever gotten. So let's go through it. Number one, the Discover It Secured Card. The Discover It Secured Card gives you a 1% or 2% cash back, depending on where you use it. So the 1% would be everywhere, and then the 2% back is at gas stations and restaurants. And what's cool about Discover is they match all your cash back after 12 months of having the card. So let's say over the course of 12 months, you got $400 cash back. At the end of that 12 months, they match that. So they give you another $400. So it feels like free money. Uh, I got, this is my first ever credit card was to discover it. It was super cool to get that extra, I can't remember the exact number, but to get that extra money after 12 months of just spending on the card, they just basically send you a little paycheck, it feels like. So that's super cool thing about the secured card is you don't need a credit score. Some people still aren't going to get approved for this if they have really, really bad credit. It is what it is. I'll talk about another option later. But what you have to do with a secured card is you have to send them a deposit. So I think the lowest is $200 and it goes up to maybe a thousand or so for your maximum. So if you send them, let's say $500 in the mail or through a, you know, through a bank transfer, then they hold that $500 and that becomes your credit line. So you send them a $500 check, that $500 check you sent them becomes your credit line and then you basically borrow against that and you pay it back, borrow against that, pay it back. After like eight months of you proving that you're worthy, uh, a worthy borrower, they'll send you that $500 back in the mail. So that's cool. And then you have graduated up to the unsecured card. But to get a secured card first is necessary sometimes. If you've tried to apply for cards before and they say, no, you don't have enough credit history, it's like super frustrating. Anyway, what you gotta do is go ahead and get a secured card. The Discover It is one option. Like I said, it has perks, no annual fee, cash back, one to 2%, and they match all your cash back at the end of that first year. So I like Discover a lot. Their customer service is really good too. So yeah, consider the Discover It card. Number two, beginner credit card. The Quicksilver Cash Rewards Secured Card. It's like a horrible name, but Quicksilver Rewards Cash Card, whatever they call it. And it's a secured card as well. So once again, you have to send a deposit their way and then they hold it on your behalf and that deposit becomes your credit line. That's a secured card. So let's say you, you did 500, just like in the other example, send it to Capital One who holds the, the card for you. And then you borrow against that 500 after a certain period of time, somewhere around eight months probably, you're a great borrower, you always pay on time, you don't max out your credit card, they're gonna send you that $500 back, and now you have graduated to an unsecured card. So with the Quicksilver, there's no annual fee, so that's cool, and you get 1.5% cash back on every single thing you buy. So it doesn't matter where you go, Walmart, you know, the Quick Trip gas station, doesn't matter, Good Guitar Center, wherever you go, if you spend on that credit card, you're gonna get 1.5% back. Spend $100, you get $1.50 back. 
So that's pretty cool. They don't match your cash back at the end of the first year. That's why I would say that Discover It would be the, the better one to do if you're going for a secured card for your first card. But that's one to check out. Uh, Capital One, secured, rewards, and I've got a picture there on the screen. Number three, this is more for someone who has really, really bad credit right now. That's okay. I'm not, not judging at all. Just saying, if you have like abysmal credit for whatever reason, then this might be the best situation for you. This is the self card. And in order to get the self card, you have to have the self credit builder account, which is pretty much just a personal loan that they put you on a payment plan and then you just pay some of it back. It's kind of difficult seeming, but they make it nice and easy. I haven't used it myself, but I watched a few videos. Uh, it seems pretty cool. I mean, you just pay like $24 a month to self. And then after like three months, I think, as long as you've built up $100 in what they call the credit builder account, then you can use that $100 as a credit line toward a self credit card. And now you have two lines of credit. You got that little personal loan thingy they got, and you've got a credit card. Only thing is, the credit card has no benefits. And it does cost money to get this help from self. Uh, I think the lowest plan costs about $89 over the course of one year. But if no one else will approve you for a credit card, you can't get the Discover It secured card, you can't get the Quicksilver secured card, go with this. Got to start your credit journey somehow. Got to get to rebuilding that credit. So it, it could be an option. Uh, go for the self card if no one else will take you and you'll be able to build credit that way. So those are the three first ever cards you should get, probably. Those are three really, really, really good beginner cards. Once you've gotten one of those three, I wouldn't get multiples. It doesn't really make sense because they're all kind of the same. Once you get one of those three, it's time to get your second card. Okay, you've had it for a little while. Maybe you had it for eight months to 12 months and your credit score is a lot better now. Let's get your second card because remember, you need a mix of credit to have the best credit score. So let's get another card. You're going to keep the other one open. You're going to keep the first one open and you're going to open a new card. So this is the second tier of second credit cards you should open, in my opinion. Here are three options. Option number one is the Apple card. So Apple card is a really, really great card. It's very much an Apple product. All their branding around it is absolutely beautiful, assuming you like the Apple branding. And it's a pretty cool card. Like number one, there's no fees on like anything ever. Number two, the interface for this credit card is the best interface I've ever seen for any credit card ever. Literally, it's like, it's the smoothest, cleanest, easy to use, most transparent credit card interface I've ever seen. And it's in the wallet app on your iPhone. If you don't have an Apple, uh, an Apple phone, like an iPhone, don't get the Apple card, obviously. Uh, so that's, that's why I have to have others on this list. If everyone owned Apple products, then I would just say, yes, get the Apple card as your second card and, and move on. But anyway. If you don't have Apple Card, go ahead and skip past this portion. But let's talk about the perks. Number one, there's no fees, like I said. Number two, the interface is great. Number three, you get 1%, 2%, or 3% cash back. And the cash back works really cool because it goes into the Apple Cash account into your wallet. You have to open a little Apple Cash account. It's really easy. And you get the cash back like the next day. Most credit cards, you have to wait a month in order to get your cash back. But with Apple, it happens like the next day, right when the transaction has settled, you get your cash back. 3% is on all Apple products when you use Apple Pay and select merchants. So some of their merchants are like ExxonMobil, uh, T-Mobile, Walgreens, Ace Hardware, Nike, Uber. It changes periodically who gets the 3%, but 3% is pretty nice for a zero annual fee card. 2% cash back would be for anywhere you use Apple Pay that's not one of those special merchants that I just mentioned. And then 1% for anything you use the card, the physical card for. They give you a titanium card. It's really cool, it's really gangster, and it's really loud. And it's like super sleek. It does not have the card number on there. It's just like the mag strip, the little chip reader, and then like your name and the Apple logo. It's pretty cool. It says Goldman Sachs on the back. Um, yeah, it's also issued by Goldman Sachs, which is a big dog bank, which feels nice to know that like you're definitely secure with uh, Goldman Sachs as the backer of the card. Anyway, Apple Card is option number one for tier number two. Option number two for tier number two, the pedal card, and specifically the pedal two card. So if you just Google pedal two, P-E-T-A-L two, uh, it's a little different. 
And I would say it's pretty good for, you waited like eight months after you got your secured card, your first card, now it's time to get your second card. The limits only go up to 10,000 with the pedal card. There's no fees like whatsoever at all. It's pretty cool. And then the cash back is somewhere between 1% and 1.5%. The more amount of on-time payments you make, the higher your cash back goes up to the 1.5% uh, limit. It's totally unlimited. And coolest thing I think, in my opinion about this, is you can get these, like they do these promotions and they're pretty often where you get like two to 10% at random merchants and they'll let you know what the merchants are through the app. So like uh, I've seen it with Lowe's a lot of times, Lowe's will do 10% back. I mean, if you have home improvements you need to make, you go to Lowe's, spend, it's super easy to spend a thousand dollars at Lowe's for home improvement stuff. And then you get a hundred dollars of that back because you got 10% cash back. That's super cool. So I think the pedal card's awesome. Um, it was just like the Apple card did those 3% back with certain merchants. Pedal card does it with 10% back certain merchants. Super cool. So check it out. Uh, consider it. It's also a really good interface. It's similar to the Apple card, kind of like new age, a lot easier and more transparent than a lot of the big banks like Discover and JP Morgan and all those. So pedal card is option number two out of three for the second tier. Number three out of three for second tier is also kind of a niche card, but it's a really good card. The Amazon, uh, the Amazon Prime Signature Rewards card, I think is what it's called. Yeah, Amazon Prime Rewards Visa Signature. Jesus, that's a horrible name. But anyway, it's the Amazon card. First, you have to have Prime in order to get the best benefits. I don't, I mean, most people have Prime. If you don't have Prime and you don't plan on getting Prime, don't get this card. But if you already have Prime and you shop at Amazon and you shop at Whole Foods, super worth it. Super worth it. Here's why. Number one, there's no annual fee outside of the Prime membership. Yes, you have to pay the Prime membership, but the card itself, excuse me, has no annual fee. And then you get, uh, right now at least, $100 Amazon gift card right away when you get approved. So that's cool. You don't have to spend anything to get that $100. They just say, here's $100 for getting the card. Uh, and then the perks that are always there, 5% back on every single purchase with no cap, no limit at all on all Whole Foods purchases and all Amazon purchases. It's crazy. I mean, it's a, you get a lot of money back. Obviously, it depends on how much you spend, but it's super nice to get that 5% back. I have this card personally. 2% uh, back at all restaurants and gas stations and drugstores, and then 1% on everything else. And then every now and then they'll do this prime uh, deal where you get 10% back on select purchases. Pretty awesome. It's also a Chase card. So JP Morgan Chase is who issues this card. That's the app you'd have to have, the Chase app, in order to use it. And then you scroll down to Chase Offers, and they have these 10% back offers that are like 30 days long. You just, you just select it. And then it'll give you the 10% back at, I don't know, Shake Shack, it's super random. Like it's not always places you'll shop. It's just like whoever ended up doing a deal with Chase. So you get that 5% back at Whole Foods, Amazon. You get 2% back gas station, drugstore, um, and restaurants, 1% back everywhere else. And then inside the Chase app, Chase will give you these uh, little Chase offers. It's pretty cool. I love this card. It is probably the one I put the most amount of my spend on. Uh, amazing card. No annual fee, like I said. So that's number three of three out of tier number two. Last tier here. Last tier. We've got, oh, my session expired. Last tier here, we've got the Amex Blue Cash Preferred card. Okay. Amex Blue Cash Preferred card is on there. And the Amex Blue Cash Preferred is a super sick card. So Number one, this should be the third credit card you get out of three, probably. And with this one, it does have an annual fee. The annual fee is really low at $95, but it does have an annual fee. So if you're just totally non-annual fee, this is not the card for you. But you can easily make that money back with the cash back that they have, assuming you're not going to pay any interest. So you get 6% back on all groceries from U.S. supermarkets. Not all supermarkets are on there. All right, I'll, I'll put a list up. I did some research and found the list from Chase, excuse me, from Amex, found the list from Amex. So I'll pop it up on the screen right here. Pause it. 
see if you shop at any of these. If you shop at any of these, you can get 6% back up to $6,000 every single year, which is pretty ridiculous. So 6% back ain't no joke. You also get 6% back on most streaming services. So if you have, I think uh, Netflix is one of them, you can put your Netflix subscription on here, you get 6% back every single month that you pay for your Netflix subscription on the Blue Cash Preferred card. You get 3% back at gas stations and you get 3% back in all transit, like bus, parking, uh, Uber Eats, or not Uber Eats, Uber, Lyft, etc. So anything transit related. And then 1% back on everything else. Uh, one thing I don't love about Amex is they kind of want you to keep all your rewards within the Amex system. So you can only use your cash back for certain things, which is a little bit unfortunate. So normally you're gonna end up paying your own statement balance with the cash back. If you wanna use your cash back for other things and you don't like that Amex wants you to keep it within the American Express system, then don't go with Amex. But regardless, it's a sick card. Uh, and then one featured benefit with this card, if you go to Equinox Gym, uh, you can get $120 back every single year in statement credit. So equinoxplus.com uh, for that. I, I don't know anyone that goes to Equinox, but they have all these different things where they want to give you a statement credit. So that's a super sick card. And another one here uh, on Amex is the Amex Gold card. So the Amex Gold card is a super sick card. And it does, it's on the points system instead of the cashback system. So with the Amex Gold card, number one, you get a membership uh, bonus. So whenever you spend a certain amount of money after six months of having the card, they give you 60,000 points, okay? So you can use those points toward travel, which is about $600 cash value, somewhere around there. You can use those points for travel through their uh, travel app. You can use them for cash back. You can use them to pay your statement balance, whatever you want to do. Uh, and they've got their whole Amex portal that they want you to use them in. But as a $250 annual fee, so that's something to consider. If you use the card a lot, the $250, you're going to get that back like real quick because you get 4, 4 X points, so like 4% back kind of at all restaurants and takeout delivery in the US, which is super sick. Uh, four times or 4% membership points at all supermarkets. Three times on all travel booked directly through the airline or with their Amex portal. And then 1% on everything else. So 4% on dining, 4% on uh, US supermarkets, so like groceries, 3% on travel, 1% everything else, and it does have a 250 annual fee. Other things it has, which is super interesting, $120 Uber cash. So they give you 10%, or not 10%, they give you a $10 statement credit each month if you're using Uber. So you have to enroll in this thing and they just give you $10 toward Uber purchases. Boom, boom, boom. So every single month you can have $10 toward Uber. That's cool if you're a person who Ubers. And then there's a $120 dining credit that you have to enroll for as well, but it's included with the Amex Gold Card. And one of the restaurants that's included on this is Shake Shack. If you've never eaten at Shake Shack, go ahead and eat at Shake Shack. If you like Shake Shack or you hate Shake Shack, put it in the comments below. Really, really good burgers. Anyway, so yeah, that is the Amex Gold Card. And then there's another tier of credit cards. And I would say that next tier of credit cards would be like your fourth or your fifth or you know, however many cards you get. And those are like the big dog cards, like the Chase Sapphire Reserve, uh, the um, Amex Platinum card is another one of them. The annual fees are getting pretty high, but the perks are like bonkers, ridiculous. Uh, I don't have any of those. I don't even know if I want any, just because the annual fees are so high, it's hard for me to justify it. Because you pretty much have to put all your spend on one of those big dog cards and not use any other cards. But anyway, Go ahead and get some of these cards. Start your credit journey. Let me know which ones you choose in the comments below. That's all I got for today. Subscribe and drop a comment. Thank you.